It has been exactly one month since I got my hands on the brand new iPhone 14 Pro. Since the first day, I've been using it extensively and it's time to look at this phone, not for a prism of the hype, but realistically. Today, I'll give you my definitive statement whether you should or should not buy it. And in the end, I will explain why I still haven't sold this phone. The least impressive thing for me is the body and overall look. Previously, I've been using the iPhone 13 Pro and I barely noticed any difference. The size, the shape, the rounded corners and the flat edges, everything is exactly the same. I can't call this a definitely good impression or bad, I'm just indifferent. The metal is cold to the touch and looks great, the glass sandwich is still relevant. My opinion in terms of design and tactile feelings didn't change a single bit. For me, it's a familiar brick, heavy and robust, looking sharp iPhone. I would say that I'm neutrally impressed with battery life. I'm on my phone a lot, texting, answering emails, watching videos, listening to music and podcasts. I shoot a lot of videos and take many photos. The phone is always in use, with all added features like always-on display, increased brightness and more power-hungry video shooting modes, the battery life is still very adequate. It gets me through the day easily and even has some juice left, but after a month of use with switching back and forth between 13 Pro for tests, I've noticed that it performs worse, not by much, but worse. The always on is pulling a lot of juice, but even with all that, it's still a battery life champ. I would really appreciate longer battery life, but the one this phone provides is still enough. If you use your phone less than me, you won't have any problems with battery life. And one more thing, I would really appreciate faster charging speeds. Existing 27 watts is good, but if I could charge my phone even faster, that would be great. Oh, sweet dreams that will never come true. The performance did leave more impression than the battery and everything I've mentioned so far. The A16 chip is great, especially in gaming. All games are running extremely smooth with stable frame rate, no hiccups there. But I was expecting much more from this chip. With the switch to better manufacturing process, I was really expecting to see the end of throttling and dim screens. But this problem still persists. At first, it seems like it takes much longer to heat up, but after many tests, it's only a difference of a couple minutes. The chip is so incredibly powerful, but Apple can't optimize it to heat up less? Why does some cheap Xiaomi works fine in games, but the expensive iPhone does not? I don't know how many years it will take Apple to fix this problem, but for now I can't call the iPhone a comfortable gaming phone. However, if we put gaming aside and look at overall performance, interface responsiveness, we would notice zero issues. Apps launch almost instantly, nothing is lagging or making you wait, but still, huge dislike for throttling. I've got a more positive experience with the screen. I've never been much of a whiner, you know me. And iPhones after 2010 have always had great screens. Ever since the iPhone 4, the screens gave you everything you could have wanted. And this year's flagship iPhone continues the tradition. No matter how you look at it, it's a great display all around. The resolution, the colors, the brightness, and those 2000 nits is pure bliss, at least for first couple minutes. When outdoors, the phone heats up rather fast and dims the screen. But if you are somewhere with bright artificial light, the problem almost disappears. I can't say anything bad about the increased brightness, but I can say some about the always on display. After a whole month, I did get somewhat used to its brightness, but it's still too distracting. I've heard people online saying that black wallpapers fix this issue, but come on, I like bright and colorful wallpapers, so why should I decrease my own comfort just to fix the problem. I want to see my colorful wallpapers each time I raise my phone, but I see them all the time, slightly dimmer, but all the time. It really distracts me from work, even with all those clever algorithms for turning it off when not needed. I feel like this feature has some potential yet to be unlocked. I just wish users could specify how they want the display to behave. This would make so much sense. But no, we have only the on and off switch. Plus, this always on drains the battery substantially. I'm not making this up. There are numerous tests online that prove how power hungry this always on display is. Even with all my focus modes and rare notifications, it decreases the battery life by about 10 to 15 percent. I do like how the always on looks, but I would rate the screen upgrade as nice to have, but needs some work. You know what else is surprising? The sponsor of this video are friends from Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands 
of inspiring classes for anyone who loves learning and wants to explore their creativity and learn new skills. Invest in yourself and your personal growth. From marketing and business analytics to productivity, web development, freelancing, and more. You can find classes that will match your goals and interests. We now live in really troublesome, financially unstable times, so it's important to know how to multiply your money instead of losing it. That's why I regularly watch finance classes by authors like Justin Bridges, Lindsay Marsh, Zachary Hartley, and many more. There are really a ton of classes. And Skillshare is ad-free, so you can stay in the zone while you're exploring new skills. New premium classes launched each week, so there is always something new to discover. The entire catalog is now available with subtitles in Spanish, French, Portuguese, and German. The first 1,000 people to use the link will get a one-month free trial, so consider joining Skillshare using the link in the description below. Moving on to the camera. Almost one-third of the entire presentation was dedicated to the camera upgrades. 48 megapixel main sensor, updated ultra-wide, the telephoto, new shooting modes. All that does seem a lot, and it really is. Seriously, the camera upgrade this year is solid. Really solid. I've had some amazing time with the camera tested in various conditions, and I'm pleased with what I see, but not without some issues. Small issues, but issues. The best addition, I think, is the large 48 megapixel sensor. Normally, it produces 12 megapixel shots, which are comparable in quality to last year's iPhone 13 Pro, but the real difference is seen when shooting 48 megapixel raw images. The difference is enormous. You can zoom in as close as you like and still see the details, textures, and accurate colors. That raw mode is a game changer. Each time I'm outdoors and want to take a picture of something beautiful, I find myself turning this mode on. Yeah, the images are 30 times heavier than normal ones, but the results are worth it. There are only two things that stop me from using this mode all the time. Internal memory and transferring. I have a 128 gig model, so the space fills up quickly. That's why I have to upload these images to the cloud or my laptop. And as soon as I try to transfer them to my computer, I start encountering the opposite side of Apple's magic. The phone still has that freakishly slow USB 2.0 lightning and AirDrop compresses the files. I have to manually save each photo as original on a Mac. The telephoto module is great, but only at 3x. Artificial 2x zoom is just nice addition. The photos are good, reasonably detailed, well lit, and with spot on coloring. Even in low light, the images are great, but the ultra wide camera, yeah, it's a bummer. It is somewhat better and less noisy than the one in 13 Pro, but the difference is negligible. Those shots are great during daylight, but in low light, well, not great. Noisy, grainy, poorly colored, and lit. And what about videos? Action mode is by far my favorite, but only during the day. I love this buttery smooth image, almost without jitters and artifacts. It's 2.8K, but looks mild better than the competitors. In low light, it's a mess, so if you're planning on shooting smooth videos at night, you better invest in a gimbal. And almost forgot the cinematic mode. Just like with 13 Pro, I almost forgot it exists. Yeah, it's now 4K with better edge detection, but I just don't need it. It's great as a toy to play with, but still has too many issues. The biggest one being, the uneven color. The white balance constantly shifts, changes, making the image messy. Plus the edge detection on hair still suffers a lot, so I would definitely stick to my normal full-size camera. And finally, the thing you've all been waiting for, the most impressive thing in the iPhone 14 Pro, the dynamic island. And let me just say, it was a hell of a ride. I hated it at first, hated it in the middle, but loved it in the end. It's far from perfect, but it has given me more emotions than any other feature. I do consider it a gimmick though. It needs tweaking and polishing. But why? Let's look closer. It all started with usability. At first, I just wasn't ready for it. I saw no ways to use it, thus saw no purpose in it. I hated how it protruded more than the regular notch. It stayed in place while watching videos, just real eyesore. But the more I used this phone, the more natural it felt. The animations are so fluent and organic. Unlike other people online, I didn't have any weird glitching, but that's only my case. Sometimes I was just opening random apps that support the 
the island and testing how it would adapt to them. Launching timers, navigation, music, paint with Apple Pay. It's so well incorporated into the interface that it almost disappears sometimes. But it was not always as good as it may sound. For example, I regularly use tap on top to get back to the beginning of a page or list. With this pill, I needed to change my habits and start tapping not in the center, but on the sides. It's less convenient for me. Plus, if you misclick, you will just go straight to the app that uses the island at the moment. Also, as I've already mentioned, it distracts from watching videos. Overall, a great gimmick that needs work. What do we have in the end? Two best things, the dynamic island and the camera. Those two things alone made me change my mind and stop trying to sell this phone. The island made me curious again and the cameras have fueled my desire to capture the beauty of this world. I am keeping this phone with all its pros and cons. It's a great device, still somewhat raw, but with great potential. If you need to upgrade your phone and have money, go for the iPhone 14 Pro. And what do you think? How is your experience with this iPhone? Have you encountered any problems? Type your opinions in the comments down below, hit that like button if you liked the video, and see you in the next one.